this is your complete guide to the city of Tallinn. How to get here from the airport or ferry port, what attractions to see, the best place to get drunk on mead, how to hang off a TV tower, and how to have the most amazing time in one of Europe's most famous medieval cities. Welcome to the Estonian capital of Tallinn. It's famously a medieval town that's surrounded by a medieval wall. The architecture and attractions around here are simply stunning. So let's have a look at a map of Tallinn and you'll notice that most of the old town is this area right here, the area that's encased in a wall. Whilst this looks intimidating, it's actually just a 10 minute walk from end to end. So whilst it's not particularly big in terms of distance, there's definitely plenty to do here within the city walls. There's also plenty of attractions to do outside of the walls, but I'll be mentioning those later in the video. But first, how to actually get here. Tallinn is served by only one airport, Tallinn Lennart Mary International Airport. It's quite a small airport, and once you leave the single terminal, the best way to get into town is to take bus number two, which will stop off at both the bus terminal, located on the east side of the city, and the train station located to the west. You can get to anywhere else in Estonia from these two places. Alternatively, Tallinn is one of Europe's biggest port cities, and if you do arrive by ferry, the ferry terminal is located to the northeast of the city. You can take public transport in if you want to, but seeing as though the exit is here and the old town is literally over there, it's literally a 10 minute walk and public transportation is not really necessary. And that's the great thing about Tallinn, is that most of the attractions you'll be interested in is located within the old town and you don't need public transportation in order to see anything. So now that you're here, let's visit the actual entrance to the old town of Tallinn. This is the Viru Gates. You've probably seen pictures of these gates on the internet, but they're two towers that guard the entrance to the town of Tallinn. The architecture is pretty sweet, they're definitely older than you think, and the fact that they're still standing is pretty amazing in itself. Just before you go in, there's plenty of flower sellers that will sell you cheap flowers, just in case this is a romantic holiday. As soon as you walk through the Viru gates, you'll notice that everything is very, very old. It's very picturesque, especially with the cobbled streets, the old houses, the medieval style signs. It almost seems like you're in a bit of a theme park, but I assure you, everything that you see here is very, very real, even down to the costumes that people are wearing. Before you step foot into any attractions, I highly recommend visiting the Tallinn Tourist Information Center, not only to pick up a free paper map, but if you're planning to see every attraction just like I did, be sure to pick up a Tallinn card. This will allow you access to pretty much every attraction here in the city, and it also includes free public transportation. You can buy it for a set number of days, but if you're not planning on seeing absolutely everything, this place also sells a travel card which looks like this, just in case you want to see attractions outside of Tallinn. Once you've walked through the Viru gates, you'll come across the main square here in Tallinn. This is the Old Town Square, complete with its own town hall and very picturesque houses and buildings. It's one of the most photographed areas of the city, and after looking at this video footage, you'll see why. I mean, look at those buildings. I'm guessing your town or village doesn't have anything that looks like this. This square has some amazing eateries, so if your idea of a holiday is just eating outside and watching the world go by, you'll have no shortage of options here. It's definitely a chill place to eat and to just watch the world go by and I definitely love the fact that people are dressed the part. But the elephant in the room is the actual town hall itself. Now you can go inside of town hall and they've got some very interesting exhibits. You get to see where councilmen generally convene and there's plenty of people in traditional costumes that will tell you all about the history of this impressive town hall. Is that the Lancashire Rose? You'll get to see everything from important manuscripts even the clock mechanism in the rooftop, and lots of scary looking waxwork statues, some of whom look very familiar. 
but arguably the best bit is to climb the bell tower itself. Now I'll be honest, it's a pain in the ass to get up there. It's narrow, the stairs are steep, but once you get to the top, you'll get some impressive views over the town square. And if you're a douchebag, you can ring the bell at the top as well, but bearing in mind you're in a bell tower, it's incredibly loud. If you have no intention of climbing bell towers, however, the town square is the lifeblood of the town. Chill out with a drink or a smoke or something to watch the world go by, it's actually quite a pretty place to do that. If you explore the streets around here, there's no shortage of other restaurants and bars that you can frequent whilst you're here in Tallinn, including this, what appears to be a Depeche Mode bar. I didn't even know Depeche Mode had a theme bar, but yeah, if you like their music, this is a nice place to go. If you want to see more of the ancient town itself, there's plenty of places where you can actually climb the walls. Most notably, Hellman's Tower, which is just around the corner from the Viru Gates. After paying a small entry fee, you can climb up the tower and walk along some of the ancient walls. It gives you a pretty trippy view of what's below you and across the actual town of Tallinn itself. The towers themselves are pretty awesome and with each of them you get this picture-perfect view, literally from every tower. Whilst you're around here, you'll eventually find St. Catherine's Passage. This totally authentic medieval street is probably one of the more photographed areas of the town, and you can see why. Because all of this stuff is super, super old. Whether it's the cobbled streets, the walls, the signs, everything is pretty much authentic here. You'll find no shortage of places to buy stuff, or to go into a pub, or eat. It definitely warrants exploring, because you don't think things like this exist anymore, but they certainly do here in Tallinn. The north of the town is guarded by this large tower and this gate. I think you'll agree, it's very pretty to look at, but what's not pretty is its name. This is Fat Margaret. I'm honestly not joking, that's what it's actually called, and it's currently home to the Estonian Maritime Museum. So if you're curious to learn the maritime history of Estonia, you'll be enthralled here. From the simplest of wooden boats to the modern ships of today, and everything in between, you can certainly learn a lot here in this museum. But arguably, the best part is to actually climb to the rooftop terrace of Fat Margaret herself. It's home to a nice restaurant and bar where you can get some stunning views over the town and the port of Tallinn. And incidentally, that big thing over there in the distance, that's our next destination. This is St. Olaf's Church. At one point, this was the biggest building in all of Europe, and the church spire is absolutely massive. The church bit itself is actually free to go inside. It's quite a plain looking church, but a nice one nevertheless, especially seeing as though they've just varnished all the floors. Given that it's free, it's definitely worth looking at. If you can spare five euros, climb to the top of the bell tower. Again, it's a very long and narrow bell tower staircase, and you'll be climbing for quite some time. But when you do get to the top, you'll be rewarded with some of the most excellent views across the town. I know I've mentioned the views a lot already in this video, but you have to agree that the views that you get from everywhere in the town are just simply beautiful. And as you're walking around, there's something interesting to look at around every corner. Whether it's old medieval guilds, people riding on horseback, medieval strip joints, yes, I can't believe it either, but they're there and there's certainly no shortage of other museums and other churches to visit. You might come across this one, Holy Church with the ancient anatomical clock outside. Inside, it's nothing special, it's probably just about worth the price of admission, but if you have a Tallinn card, it's worth exploring anyway, seeing as though it's included in the price. If we walk towards the west side of the town, you'll notice that the stairs are getting narrower and a lot steeper and that's because you're technically climbing a hill. And on top of that hill, you'll find this. Tompia Castle. This is the parliament building for the country of Estonia. Even though it's heavily guarded most of the time, it's surrounded by a very lovely park space. You can definitely chill out whilst you're around here. It's also here where you'll find Tall Herman. This is the tower that proudly displays the Estonian flag from sunrise to sunset 
and this is the stereotypical image of Estonia itself. Because it's a working parliament building, it's not really a tourist attraction. That said, if you do want to have a look at the inside, there are free of charge guided tours on select days. You'll need to show your passport on entry and be security checked, but once you go inside, you can see and learn all about how the Estonian government works. There's many impressive rooms here at Tompia Castle, but none are more impressive than this place. This is where Parliament assembles, and I've got to admit, this is one of the kookiest coloured Parliament buildings that I've ever visited. It almost reminds me of my old school, if you can believe that. But if you look out of the window at Tompia Castle, you'll find the most photographed building in all of Tallinn. This is the Alexander Nevsky Cathedral. This is the Russian Orthodox Church located here in the city. From the outside, it definitely looks like something from St. Petersburg, with the black onion dome roofs, the gilded paintings on the exterior, it's all very picturesque. And when you go inside, it's very typical of a Russian Orthodox Church. Lots of red and gold everywhere, and if you've never been on the inside of a Russian Orthodox Church before, it's definitely different to some of the other churches that we're used to here in the West. It's an experience in itself, but one that's free of charge to go inside of. Just remember guys, you're technically on top of a hill, and around the Nevsky Cathedral, there's two viewpoints that I highly recommend you visit in order to get some stunning views over the town of Tallinn. Particularly at this point right here, this is where you'll get that stereotypical shot of Tallinn. And this guy seems more interested in the seagull. Hmm, well, there's something for everyone, I guess. And if you do get lost here in the old town, don't worry about it because you'll have the most amazing time exploring some of the narrow streets, some of the stereotypical shops, and it's generally a fun place to have an adventure. And you never know what's around the corner. Take this for example. It looks like an ordinary green looking building, but believe it or not, these are the former prison cells of the KGB that you can pay to explore if you want to. Right next to the Swedish Embassy, which is this bright pink coloured building here, you'll find the infamous House of the Blackheads. One of the most historic buildings here in Tallinn, it's home to the Blackhead Order. Nearby you'll find the Dome Church, I must admit it's very similar to the Holy Church that we visited just before, and right next to the Estonian National Monument, which looks pretty cool from the outside, you'll also find this bright yellow church, St. John's. It's free to go inside, it's quite a nice looking church, but if you're all churched out, you could probably avoid this one. One of the must view churches that I highly recommend you visit whilst you're here in Tallinn is this, St. Nicholas's Church. When you go inside, you'll notice that they've converted the church into more of a museum piece. It definitely doesn't resemble a church anymore, even though it has church paraphernalia everywhere. I totally understand that churches have to make money in this day and age, but this seems like such a shame. Death comes to us all, hmm, how ominous. The reason why I want you to visit this particular church is because it's the only church in the city that has a glass lift that will take you to the top of the bell tower. So if you're a wheelchair user or if you have mobility issues, you won't have a problem here because the glass elevator will take you all the way up the bell tower where you get some amazing views over the town of Tallinn and of the Alexander Nevsky Cathedral across the way. If you only have time for a couple of churches, the Nevsky Cathedral and this St. Nicholas's Church are probably the two that I would recommend that you visit. Whilst you're at St. Nicholas's, you'll notice this circular tower in the distance. This tower, whilst it's grand, has a rather strange name. This is Kikin de Kok. Yes, I know, I know, it sounds like Kikin the Cock, but along with the Viru Gates and Fat Margaret, this is the other way that you can enter the city. The main tower of Kikin de Kok is definitely very old and you can see exactly what they used it for back in the day. There's so many levels to this tower, it's actually impressive how much stuff there is and how impressive the views are. It's a joint to the walls that surround the town. So if you haven't explored Hellman's Tower that we saw earlier in the video, definitely buy tickets for Keek and the Cock. It's definitely better value for money. Not only do you explore all of the towers and see some of the cool stuff that they've built in here, but you also get to learn a lot about the history of Tallinn itself. 
you'll get to see some pretty kooky things like this, and this, and uh, that. Some of it's pretty educational, some of it's pretty gruesome, and some of it is just a little bit weird. There also seems to be a planetarium and lots of weird non-Estonian weapons, but I suppose that adds to the charm. It's just a little bit random, and you'll be surprised at what you'll discover here whilst you're exploring the towers. And as always, the views are incredible. This also allows you access to the underground tunnels and the carved stone museum. It's actually pretty creepy down here, pretty unnerving to know that people used to live, work and die down here. And you'll definitely come across some shady characters whilst you're exploring these little tunnels. Nah, I'm joking, they're just made of wax. Except for that one of Rasputin, he appears to be real. You get access to all of this with just one ticket. And in my opinion, this was one of the top attractions that I did here in Tallinn. At this point of the video, you're probably getting quite hungry. And there's a few things that I want you to try before you leave Tallinn. The first is something called Vana Tallinn. It's the national drink of Estonia and brewed right here in the city. It's a rum-based liqueur and it's not to everyone's taste, but it's definitely worth a try. This is also where they make a drink called mead. It's basically beer brewed from honey. It doesn't taste like any beer I've ever had, but quite a pleasant one. Try some Calio chocolate, the Estonian version of Hershey's or Cadbury's. And whilst you're here, visit one of the oldest cafes in all of Europe, which is located right here, and it's actually quite a nice place to eat. There's plenty of places around town where you can try typical Estonian things like the gift shops and the restaurants, and you'll literally find them everywhere. But if Estonian cuisine isn't your thing, you will find themed restaurants for every kind of cuisine in the world. So if you're a bit of a picky eater, you'll have no problem finding food that you will like here. And if you thought Tallinn was a beautiful town in the day, wait till the sun goes down because it gets even prettier at night. Be sure to visit some of the attractions that you've already been to at night. I guarantee you won't be disappointed with any photo or video that you take here, because Tallinn is an equally beautiful town at night as it is during the day. Especially in the summer months, it doesn't really go dark. And believe it or not, this footage was actually taken at 1 in the morning. And even the flower sellers are still working. Wow, that's a tough job. If you leave the old town, especially on the east side of the city, you'll find that all the buildings are super modern. And around here, there's definitely no shortage of places where you can shop or eat or stay in more modern facilities. The most recognizable of which is this, the Viru Hotel. Possibly the most famous hotel in all of Estonia, it's a behemoth of a building. Once you go inside, it's a very fancy hotel and I recommend that you take the elevator up to the top floor, where you'll find this stunning rooftop bar that overlooks the city. But that's not the only attraction that I want you to see, because this also happens to be home to the KGB Museum. Believe it or not, the KGB used to spy on hotel guests from this top floor, and it's a very interesting look at how they did that. But if you're not interested in Soviet-era espionage, the rooftop bar is definitely worth the trip alone. If you want to explore outside the city limits, or if you've done everything in this video already, I recommend that you take the number 38 bus to some of the other attractions that's worth visiting. Namely of which, the Rusalka Memorial. This angel statue is dedicated to the victims of the Rusalka shipwreck. It also happens to be right next to a few beaches, so if you're after spending time in the sun, you can definitely do that here. Across the road, you'll find this, Kadriog Palace. It's one of the most beautiful buildings in Estonia, and I'm really not joking. It's definitely stunning to look at from the outside, especially from the courtyard with all of these manicured gardens. It definitely takes a whole army of people to maintain this, and they've done a fantastic job. It was originally home to Soviet royalty, but nowadays acts more like an art gallery. Inside, they've largely kept it intact as to how it used to be, albeit now with a whole bunch of art hanging from the walls. It's definitely worth exploring, especially this central room right here. The decor is very impressive, 
and you even get a free class of infants to go along with that. If you're seriously into art, Kadriog Palace is a nice place to go, but you'll also find Kumu, the Art Museum of Estonia. This is the largest art museum in the city, and it definitely comes recommended if you are into art. But if you're not into art at all, that's okay, because Kadriok Park, which is the park space around these two buildings, is probably one of the nicest parks that you'll ever step foot in. It's immaculately manicured, and it definitely resembles various royal gardens that I've seen around Europe. I particularly like the fountains, the shrubberies, the rose gardens and the walls full of roses, and the lake that's smack bang in the middle of it all. If you're only interested in taking it easy in and amongst nature, this is certainly worth a few hours of your time. And massive respect to the army of people that keep this place looking pristine. They must work hard in order to keep the park looking like this. The last attraction I recommend that you visit, if you get back on bus number 38, it'll eventually take you to this. The Tallinn TV Tower. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why on earth would I visit a TV tower in the middle of nowhere? Well, first of all, it's quite an impressive structure in itself. When you go inside, there's a cool exhibit detailing the history of its construction. But ultimately, the best part is to actually go to the top of the tower itself. And surprise, surprise, you get some amazing views from up here. I particularly like standing on these glass floor bits. And boy, that's a long way down. If that's not exciting enough for you, you can actually be strapped to a harness and walk along the edge of the tower. Especially on a windy day, this can be quite nerve-wracking, but today it was actually quite calm. As you're walking around the edge of the tower, you'll be in awe at the stunning views that you'll see from up here, especially if it's a nice day like it is right now. And when you're done risking death, the on-site restaurant comes recommended as well. Overall guys, Tallinn is definitely a place that I want you to visit once in your life. I genuinely fell in love with the architecture, the people, the things to do, the atmosphere. It was definitely the highlight of my entire trip around Scandinavia. Definitely add this to your own bucket list and I guarantee you won't be disappointed. Okay Nin, I'm sold. What do I need to do? Well, you need to come here to Tallinn. As mentioned earlier in the video, Tallinn is only served by one airport and you'll need to take the number two bus in order to get to town. If you're arriving by sea, the Tallinn ferry port is literally a 10 minute walk away from the old town. When you're in town, you don't actually need public transport to get by, but if you do, visit any kiosk and buy yourself an all-inclusive travel pass, which will allow you access to the buses, the trams and the local trains to get you around the place. Don't bother with the hop-on hop-off tour buses because they're actually not allowed to enter the old town itself, so they're basically useless. You only really need the buses to see the few attractions located outside of the old town. The cost? Well, Tallinn is actually a very cost-effective city, and you'll find that the prices here are generally a lot cheaper than in mainland Europe. To save yourself even more money, buy yourself a Tallinn card. This will allow you access to all the attractions and also provide you free public transport for the duration of the card. The food and drink prices are incredibly reasonable and you definitely won't be poor once you leave Tallinn. If you're looking for a place to stay, Tallinn isn't short on hotels, but if you do stay in the old town itself, the facilities really aren't that great. My advice to you is to stay in one of the ultra-modern hotels that's located to the east of the old town. And it's here where you can find the more modern hotels at better prices. I stayed at the Metropole Hotel, which was absolutely fantastic and only a five minute walk away from the Viru gates. Is there anything else I need to know? Yes. Outside of a licensed bar, alcohol sales are prohibited between 10 p.m. and 10 a.m. So if you find yourself in a supermarket after 10 p.m., you won't be able to buy alcohol. Speaking of which, most attractions open at 10 a.m. and some of them have incredibly short opening times. So be sure to check the opening and closing times of any attraction before you visit. The spoken language here is Estonian, 
but most people here speak a good degree of English, Russian and Finnish, so if you speak any one of those four languages, you'll be absolutely fine. Once you're done with your travel card, most likely at the airport, visit any R kiosk in order to get your deposit for the card back. And finally, it's a legal requirement to have a reflector on you at night. This is more important in the winter months than the summer months, but you must have something that reflects light attached to yourself when it's dark. There's plenty of shops that will sell you decorative reflectors, and failure to display one at night may result in a fine from the police. If you have enjoyed this episode, please be sure to like, share and subscribe. Comment on that comment section below, and if you've got any other bucket list ideas you know what to do. If I get enough suggestions, I'll probably make a video about it. But guys, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. Here in Tallinn, it's the strangest thing. It's one in the morning, and the sky never actually turns black, and people are still out here partying, the flower sellers are still selling flowers. Quite like it. Three, two, one. Sorry. It's really tight up here, and the climb up is pretty hefty, but once you get to the top, the views overlooking Tallinn are suddenly special.